Hey, good morning. <laughs> Happy Saturday. What a beautiful morning to be alive. And uh, hey, I welcome you to Casey Caban Live Q&A Saturday morning cartoons. And uh, boy, I am really excited. It's a uh, 14 degrees outside and there was a, uh, a blast of... Uh, ice. <laughs> it's hard to call it snow. <clears throat> and so it's, uh, my uh, windows on my van are all just covered with sheets of ice. And I'm sitting in here nice and cozy and uh, going through propane <laughs> to stay warm. And uh, good morning, you guys. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming and joining me on this happy Saturday. So uh, I want to tell you some stories uh, about my uh, recent uh, <laughs> experiences. Um, I had a relentless uh, six straight days of rewriting and re-editing and uh, preparing uh, the Orin Oracles book uh, for the publisher. And uh, uh, I finally got it sent. Uh, Yesterday, they've been waiting uh, patiently. I had to completely reformat it. And when I first learned this uh, a couple weeks ago, it was a little bit of a uh, uh, what a drag. I got to do this all over. But then I had an epiphany about it and um, I got real excited. And it's a good thing because um, it allowed me uh, to completely. Um, reconsider every single poem, which there's 146 of them now. And um, so some of them I rewrote uh, a bit, trimmed them, cleaned them up, and uh, I learned a lot about editing. It was really a uh, big learning curve, big time. And uh, so it's all good. It's really good. And um, I put out a, a request to uh, several people uh, for their consideration if they might have uh, any comments they'd like to add to be a part of the book. And the response was really uh, amazing and uh, very humbling. And so people from really all over the world um, are going to make some uh, contributions uh, to the comment section of the book, which I appreciate and I thank you because um, it just uh, adds more color uh, to the overall uh, uh, content. And uh, so I'm excited about that. And uh, now, <coughs> here's where it gets really fun. After six straight days of staring at my uh, computer, and doing this and it is a process editing is really intense and I um, I finally took myself on an artist date <laughs> it was um, it was a uh, up, it was like spring it was up to 33 degrees yesterday <laughs> so I called up my uh, local golf course and asked him if it was open and um, he called me back and he says, yeah, man, come on down. So I did. And uh, I was the only one there. Big surprise. <laughs> That's like a private club. Anyway, um, I had, uh, uh, I was wearing my gloves and, uh, but my fingertips were getting pretty cold. And uh, he had a felled uh, tree that had rotted and um, oh, thank you, Andrew. He just uh, finished his uh, <laughs> message. That's so sweet. And uh, anyway, he had this uh, rotted tree that he felled and uh, cut it all up. And he had this big burn barrel. Um, and he was burning it uh, out there uh, right between uh, the fifth and sixth hole, whatever. And so I decided I'd just pull up there and uh, take the uh, sting out of my fingertips. So uh, 
I uh, took my gloves off, hung out, and uh, was warming my hands. And uh, and Kurt, who owns the place, he came along, and and so uh, we ended up in a chat. I like this guy. I turned him on to urine therapy, and I don't know if he's done it yet, but he's curious. He watches. So uh, anyway, uh, so I got my hands warm, continued my game, and uh, went around. And it's a nine-hole course, and so you do it twice if you want to play a full 18, which is what I intended, because um, I knew this uh, temperature was going to change, and it's it did. <laughs> so when I was going around on my second round, I pulled in by the barrel again and decided I would just warm my hands one more time. And so there I stood um, and the wind was behind me. It was blowing away. And so I was just standing there. And then all of a sudden it was like a little microburst or something. And the flames all shot right up into my face. Now I happen to have my hoodie on and I have my glasses on, my blue blockers. but. I ended up uh, getting a, uh, a beard, beard and mustache trim. I mean, I could feel it, I could smell it, and I could hear it crackling, you know. And I was like, wow, <laughs> what a rush. And so, uh, yeah, that was exciting. But here's what I want to really note. This is what I, uh, I've been realizing. Now, if you even looked at videos just even from a couple weeks ago, um, it's really apparent uh, my gray hair is leaving, including on my beard. I mean, you can see it in the side. It's just disappearing. <laughs> the gray's going away. And pee therapy, man. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I wash my hair and my face uh, every single day with my uh, morning pee after I uh, do my first one and start looping and uh, but I was looking this morning and I was looking at it closely and I'm going wow <laughs> the gray's going away it's like really disappearing in front of my eyes so it's just more further uh, proof <laughs> it's working <laughs> You know, so, uh, uh, just, uh, yeah, thank you, Caroline. Yeah, it is. It's just like uh, my hair is getting um, darker. The gray is just like going away. <laughs> what a trip, huh? So, uh, <clears throat> anybody who doubts, you know, let them. You know, I get a lot of comments. I, I mean, I respond to people, everybody. I respond to everybody. Um <clears throat> Baba G wants to say good morning. He will not, she will not stop. <laughs> there are a couple of little scallywags, Baba G and, and, uh, and Muji. Uh, they get like, uh, they get like a couple of cats on crack. <laughs> they just start tripping. They're a total, uh, circus. I live in a circus. <laughs> so, uh, Anyway, man, I'm way excited. I am. I mean, life is just good. It's just a beautiful day to be alive. Things are just, uh, you know, magical, really. No, I don't diet. <clears throat> no, this is, uh, no. <laughs> pee. <laughs> I diet with pee. <laughs> and uh, it's working, you know. Uh, I mean, it really is a marvel. Um, now, yeah, I... I grew the beard uh, only because, you know, I don't have a, uh, a bathroom, a shower, you know, any of that living in this trailer. And uh, the last time I actually had a actual bath and shower was, jeez, uh, it's been um, <clears throat> six weeks. And uh, I don't stink. I'm not dirty. I do my pee baths, man. I spray it on and rub it in and wash my face and <clears throat> ears and eyes and hair every morning. It's working. What can I say? It's working. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm digging it. I am. Um, you know, yeah, pee is my new hair dye. <laughs> it just changes. Um, and the cat is being 
relentless this morning. Just won't stop. They get like this. Hey, good morning, Heidi. <laughs> yeah, so um, it is a marvel. You know, P is really, uh, it's really amazing. And uh, I've been having some uh, really awesome um, video chats and uh, personal messages because I, I sent out all these shout outs to a whole bunch of people. And so um, <clears throat> I was um, in a uh, conversation with uh, Bobby. She runs the uh, urine um, uh, site, um, the perfect remedy, I mean, our, uh, our own natural remedy. And uh, we were kind of in a long conversation, which was very cool. And, you know, she's had a lot of trolls, and so she, she works endlessly and actively to eliminate trolls. And, you know, I, uh, so she asked me, uh, because she wants to start a new um, kind of closed group um, that doesn't bring attention to the um, urine therapy part. And so she asked me if I would, uh, you know, if I had any thoughts of a name or whatever, because she appreciates my, uh, my wordsmithing. And uh, so I, got, I gave her one, and she's going to go with it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be cool. <laughs> so I won't, I won't reveal it yet. I'll let her uh, develop it. But I was honored uh, that she asked me. And... Uh, yeah, so it's uh, <laughs> amazing times. But, you know, I, I said to her, you know, um, you know, in the truth, you know, because she showed me, actually. She posted uh, it into the message a couple of uh, sites. <laughs> One's called Shit Therapy. <laughs> it's just disgusting and hilarious. Somebody's wiping shit all over their face. And, I, you know, I, I just laughed, you know. And she says, yeah, these are, uh, you know, she put two. She said, these are these groups that are, um, you know, mocking urine therapy. And, and so I just said, you know, in the wisdom of the Buddhists, um, you know, you can't have one without another. It's, you know, it's just life. And to really give it any focus or attention is just something I don't really do. I just stay focused on my mission, my purpose, and my intent. And... Uh, let it be because they're going to exist but you know she's determined to eliminate them and I honor that you know that's a prerogative and that's her um, mission is to stamp out the trolls <laughs> and good for her you know really I mean you know it take I said it you know wiping out trolls is a full-time occupation and I just don't have that luxury of time to give any energy to it at all and I've had mine you know, I just laugh at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Andrew says that brings a new meaning to the phrase shit faced. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm really pissed. Want to join me? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> it's a whole new language, man. It is. It, I mean, it's hilarious how many people keep participating and recreating a whole new vocabulary based on P. I mean, it's just a, uh, it's truly phenomenal. Uh, it, it blows my mind. It makes me laugh every day. <laughs> and why not? You know, you can either focus on the uh, dark and the negative or, you know, you can focus on the light and the humor. To me, I think uh, we're all just cartoons. Uh, everybody, you know, whether we realize it or not. And uh, I decided, you know, it, it just appeared to me a couple weeks ago and I put it up, uh, you know, last week. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you remember the Rocky and Bullwinkle show, Mr. Peabody, who adopted uh, the little boy. And he was the uh, parental and the wise uh, dog. <laughs> So, I decided I'm Mr. Peabody, but with P-E-E, -E. <laughs> ha buddy, I am, because I am just a Peabody, and a factory. Hey, Glenn, good morning. Hey, Andaline. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm just a factory. I mean, I, I'm building, uh, hey, good morning, Rick. 
I am building a uh, quite a collection. I've got um, as of this morning, I think uh, I'm I'm at 30 gallons <laughs> of aged urine, and uh, you know when it gets uh, time comes spring and uh, Rick, pay attention to this. <laughs> I intend to create uh, a bathtub. I'm going to find it free. Somebody's going to just put it out there on Craigslist or whatever. I'm going to get the uh, lumber. I'm going to build a deck. I'm going to put a, uh, a bathtub out there. And I am going to fill it with my aged urine. And uh, I'm going to cover it with a uh, bubble wrap and make a, uh, make a hot tub. An HP hot tub. Uh, that's totally um, heated uh, by solar energy, you know, uh, photosynthesis. And I'm going to lay out there naked in the sunshine, soaking in my pee. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> but at 14 degrees today, it's really a dream in my mind. I hold that vision. Yeah, I get a snorkel. Very funny. <laughs> yeah, my own very amniotic sac. I'm going back to the womb. I'm going to have a womb with a view, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to just soak that shit up big time. I, I, I had my very first, actually, when I had the uh, opportunity uh, to be at Rick, and Rick has uh, joined us today, which I really appreciate, and he actually owns this uh, property uh, where I dwell, and I steward the land and uh, keep a good eye and just kind of a guardian angel uh, for this uh amazing and beautiful uh, 80 acres and uh, you know right now it's in its dormancy so it has this kind of haunting uh, poetic beauty to it and I really look forward to uh, seeing the spring come which isn't far away ha huh? you know we're like just a month or so out from springtime and this place is just filled with maples I mean the whole ground cover on this 80 acres is maple leaf and so uh, I look forward to uh, seeing it all turn uh, to its uh, magical uh, dance, and I know it will, because uh, that's how it rolls, man. <laughs> We're not going to have sheeting, sleeting ice uh, every day for much longer, and I look forward to it, because this last several weeks, man, it's uh, all my money, really so much of my money is just going to gas and propane just to... Uh, you know, power up and uh, stay warm, but it's all good. It's temporary. This too shall pass. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I have some really great news too. Uh, coming up uh, on next Tuesday's uh, Orin Oracle Live, um, Leah Sampson's going to join me, and uh, Leah's remarkable. She uh, goes by uh, White Buffalo Catwoman. And uh, she's got quite a remarkable story. She, uh, she had some uh, severe injury, burns actually, from a, uh, she was doing a sweat lodge and somebody spilled the water and, it, it, and she had this steam flash that uh, burned a, a good portion of her body. And she's got remarkable uh, healing um, testimonial. And so I'm really excited about having her uh, join me. And uh, the week after that is uh, Jordan Blakey, uh, who is the, um, uh, the admin and uh, the creator of the Urine Magic Group. And uh, he knows a lot about making uh, uh, kombucha uh, pee tea. <laughs> I'm going to look forward to that one. That's going to be a great uh, learning curve. And then... Um, after that, Monica Swift, who is also the uh, developer and the admin for uh, Urine Therapy, another group. And so uh, we're going to get some of the uh, old school, you know, the people have been around doing this stuff for a long time. Um, I'm still a newbie and I'm only a year into this shit, man. Man, piss is bliss, man. It works. It's so amazing. I mean, look at this. This is crazy. You know, the gray is just going away. <laughs> day by day, it blows my mind. <laughs> you know, and I feel it. I, I mean, you know, it's starting to be uh, more uh, obvious to me, but I can feel it. That's the big thing, you know. Oh, yeah, we're going to grow some food. 
<clears throat> you know, we got uh, we got the compost building and, you know, some, uh, you know, I don't know, it's 80 acres. I don't know if we're going to have any room to grow food. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's all good, though. You know, this is good. Life is good. And uh, then the following week after that, on the 6th of March, um, I'm going to be joined by uh, Brian Smith and Graham Hart, the two uh, gentlemen over in Europe who uh, invited me on to their radio show, which was a real privilege. And actually, he, uh, oh, my hands are awesome, Andaline. Thanks for asking. Actually, when I got here two months ago, they were still pretty tender and a little delicate and sore, but man, they are just, oh, it's just amazing to me. It's amazing to me how my body is changing day by day by day. It just gets better and better and better. Ha! What a thrill it is to be alive, you know. I never in my wildest dreams uh, imagined um, anything so as fantastic as your therapy. It's it's mind-boggling how cool it is, how simple it is, how effective it is, and it's working. It's working for me. And so, uh, anyway, um, you know, back to the book, uh, you know, it is into the uh, publisher, which I am uh, really grateful about. Um, it was, a, it was, it was really a relentless six days of uh, <laughs> staring the screen and rewriting and editing and uh, you know I still I it, you know I've, I've put out a request to a lot of folks to um, you know offer um, if they uh, choose to make comments uh, to add to the book and I make that a public welcome you can uh, consider it if you'd like um, if you like my poetry and uh, want to make any contribution towards the comments uh, I welcome them and uh, if you do that just send them to um, we do Shivambu at uh, gmail.com, uh, and uh, I do go by the pen name Casey Caban. That is, uh, that's how I roll. You know, if you don't know by now, We do Shivambu is my stunt double. <laughs> he just came out of nowhere and decided that uh, he is going to groove with the P. So, uh, you know, Casey just uh, said. Okay, man. Go for it. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> yeah, we work in tandem. That's how it rolls, you know. Uh, you know, Casey Caban is uh, the uh, the writer. That's who, you know, that's who I am. We do Shabon Boo as a character, you know, and it just appeared to me. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> when I first started drinking my pee, it just appeared to me, man. That name just, like, popped. And I said, no, that's too fucking funny. I have to go with that one. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, it resonates, you know. I like it, you know. People seem to like it, so it's all good. So, um, <laughs> uh, life is good, man. It's just beautiful, you know. Every day is just a marvel. And that's why I talk about cartoons, you know. If you look around, you know, and uh, understand, you know, what a marvel it is. Uh, people say, you know, how you doing? I go, I, oh, man, I'm doing marvelous. And they go, marvelous? And I go, yeah, marvelous. <laughs> I said, when you look at the cartoons, you know, Marvel Comics, and realize that, ah, oh, man, we're living, you know, we're living in a world of cartoons. And the more you realize it... <laughs> You know, the more fun you're going to have. I recognize I'm just a cartoon. I'm a character. I, you know, I animate. I, I enjoy myself. Life is hilarious to me. I can't take any of it too serious. I haven't got any time to hate anybody. I just don't. It's too much uh, wasted energy on things that are, you know, non-essential. And, uh, you know, I've done all that, man. I've had my anxiety, my depression, my sadness, my fear-based bullshit ideas, and and I I work at it. I maintain a mantra to, uh, you know, get above all that shit. You know, and I work at it. I just work at it every day. I'm just a practitioner. You know, I haven't arrived at anything. I have no destination to arrive to. It's all a journey, one day at a time. 
just one day at a time, one moment, each breath I take, I inhale the love and I exhale my gratitude. Every moment, that's how I roll. Life is good. <laughs> so, yeah, they, um, the things are happening. You know, they, uh, it, it's just, it's humbling, mind-blowing, really. Um, you know, I was just looking at my YouTube uh, stats this morning, and it's uh, quickly approaching 900, and I think like 108,000 views or something. And, you know, wow. You know, the High Vibe tribe keeps growing. and I don't know. People seem to be resonating to the um, higher frequency. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just here. You know, I don't claim to be anything except myself, and I'm just having fun. <laughs> That's it. I'm just rolling with it and allowing it all to uh, be whatever it is. You know, people are going to discover for themselves you know, the, the, uh, the key to the magic, they already have it. It all lives inside of us. And it's beyond the P. The P is significant, you know, no doubt. But what we think about, we bring about. And it, it's really um, a responsibility. And equal uh, as an opportunity. We can all change our uh, whole paradigm. We can shift it in the blink of an eye. Blink of an eye, simply by uh, considering what we think about most. And if we're not thinking about our highest good, mm, you might not like the results, you know. It, it, it just works. It's very powerful. And I've been in the dark. I know what the dark looks like. Um, you know, my, my light's been dim, you know, real dim, down to a flicker. Um, yeah, I've entertained a lot of suicide thoughts, you know. I've entertained all that shit uh, a lot in my life, not just once or twice, but uh, repetitively. Um, because I couldn't, I, I just couldn't see what the point was. You know, I looked around and I thought, man, I'm just a stranger in a strange land. I just want out of this mess. But I don't feel that way anymore. Not at all. Uh, P therapy helped me in that. It did. It, it, it really um, cleared up my mind. Uh, my pineal gland is wide open. My third eye is no longer blind. And my heart's way open. And it just constantly shifts. It changes every day. Um, I can feel it. You know, that's why I had to just roll up on the uh, P poems. I mean, after 146 P poems. <laughs> How many pee poems are in you, bro? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a pee factory, so, you know, who knew? But, yeah, you know, there it is. I had to bring closure to that portion so that I could just feel complete uh, with that, uh, you know, with that creative line. And uh, I've been refocusing all of my uh, poetry um, just by what's coming through me. Uh, it's not like I do anything with intent. I just allow... Uh, whatever's flowing to uh, just flow, just let it be. I mean, that's the uh, you know universal mind. That's the creative flow. That's the God that I am. That I am. That's just the simple being of beingness, and uh, trusting and allowing all of the energy that uh, you know lives within us. And uh, yes, Glenn, everyone has the choice. Dream the dream that keeps life magical and let go of the negative and embrace the good. Open the heart. Yeah. It's really true. It's not a mystery. You know? Um, to me. Um, and it's funny because, you know, when I look back at my life, I mean, yeah, I, back in the 80s, I was just eating, uh, you know, self-help books and transformational books for breakfast. I'd read uh, three to five a week. I mean, I was just... You know, I was running a big business, and I, motivation was a part of it. And so, you know, I inspired uh, to keep working on myself and share that uh, experience with others. And uh, certainly there was an underlying agenda because I had, uh, I had a business. You know, I had, uh, you know, inspired people to uh, 
build their business and be motivated. So, you know, all of those were tools um, in order to uh, accelerate that idea. Um, and that's why I like the P thing, because, you know, I really don't have a, an agenda. I don't have something hidden up my sleeve. My card says it right up front, you know. I mean, <laughs> when I hand people my card, it's like, hey, man, dig it or don't dig it. I don't care. You know, but P is free and it works for me. And uh, anybody who wants to see that, they can or not. I don't care. None of my business what people do. You know, if I think I can control what other people are doing, I better think again. It's like me thinking I'm going to control these cats, <laughs> these crazy cats on crack. <laughs> oh, God, they're just nuts sometimes, man. And they eat nothing but raw food. I mean, you know, my food budget, <laughs> I'd say at this point of a good 30% 30, uh, 30 or more of my food budget is buying them uh, chicken, fish, beef, raw, you know, feeding them raw. My squirrel hunter went away. <laughs> he went to visit a friend, and he's been gone, I don't know, maybe a month or so. And, you know, he's having fun. Uh, I know. I, I haven't talked to him uh, uh, any of that. But I just know, you know. Daniel is a gift. You know, he's a prize. And, uh, you know, he's a total free spirit. And, uh, you know, I just uh, celebrate him. You know, I told him when we were driving to... Uh, St. Louis, where I took him to the Amtrak. I said, you know, I think back in, uh, you know, I was watching, um, it was a Martin Scorsese film called No Direction Home, and it was a uh, documentary film on um, Bob Dylan. And, um, you know, it, it covered a lot of archives, had a lot of it really, if you've never seen it, it's really amazing uh, film. But anyway, um, I think back of uh, a lot of the uh, quotes and um, thoughts that people had about uh, the young Bob Dylan when he first went to New York, when he was like 20, and uh, in the village and, you know, performing in the uh, coffee houses and whatnot. And they all said, well, you know, he's in his head, he, you know, writes a lot, he's, you know all those things and you know I kind of recognize that um, in Daniel and that uh, he is just a real uh, creative uh, brilliant young man and you know I just honor him I respect him I love him dearly you know it's how I ended up here uh, because I have so much love and respect for this young man and he's a wise old soul for such a young man <laughs> he is he's a beautiful spirit and uh, that's how I had the privilege of meeting his father as well. Rick is a fine man, and, you know, I have nothing but love and respect for these, uh, these people, you know, and I appreciate, uh, you know, being able to uh, steward this land, hanging out here in Orintown. <laughs> you know, it's an Orintown bliss here, you know, and it is. It's a, you know, it's really a... I never, yeah, I, I, I'm a coastal, you know, I grew up on the west coast, lived on the east coast, and, you know, first inland I went was to Sedona, um, and a short stint in Colorado, uh, up near Telluride, but basically, you know, I was always coastal and high desert, so to end up in the heartland, like, kind of smack dab in the middle of it all, um, surprised me, but I love it, I really actually love Missouri, I, I'm, and I can't wait until, well, I can wait, I will wait, but, um, you know, see it bloom and blossom, uh, you know, as it comes into the uh, springtime. Because I know um, it's just going to be this glorious, uh, rich, magical um, land of uh, green, you know. It's not going to be this, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, this, uh, dormancy that is in now but the trees are resting they're preparing they're getting ready you know for their blossom and bloom aren't we all I mean that's what we're doing in our lives really is you know preparing ourselves for our greatest blossom and bloom like wildflowers in the spring and you know it lives in all of us all of us 
There's no sense squashing our dreams. Celebrate them. You know, picture yourself in your most uh, amazing way, in your greatest vision that you can ever imagine because it's there. Greatness lives in everyone. And, you know, if you look around, um, most, I'd say most, if not all, um, people have been uh, wounded, um, usually early uh, in childhood. And without uh, recognizing and releasing and processing uh, those wounds, we carry them. And if you look at people that are, you know, in their fear base, if they're offensive, uh, over defensive, bullying, or, you know, whatever, you know, full of rage and hate and all that, they're the ones who need the biggest hug. They're the ones that are lost in their. Um, in their dreams, you know, their dreams were squashed, and uh, you know, I uh, have a lot of empathy. I do. You know, there's no sense hating. Um, there's enough of that. There's enough resistance. There's enough offense. There's enough defense. I just see the need for more cooperation. You know, the more we just cooperate and love each other, the uh, healing process. Um, begins. Even in our most tragic moments, you know, as we're, you know, dealing with, you know, really deep stuff, which I've been through all of them. Uh, you know, I've been through divorce and lots of death and suicide and, you know, uh, drugs, you know, I, my life has uh, been one giant colorful uh, enterprise of one circus, one rodeo, one uh, carnival after another. And so I, you know, carried a lot of that uh, with me. But I, I work at it. I just work at it uh, to not let these things run my life like I allowed them to uh, in my past, because I did. I let this shit run me. And uh, it didn't serve me. It was just a form of self-sabotage, which is self-loathing, which is uh, um, failing to recognize self-love. It's really what it boils down to in the simplest terms. And the more we uh, can see that and recognize that within our own existence, within our own beingness, uh, the more we'll recognize it in others. As we uh, allow um, ourselves uh, to live in unconditional love of ourselves, then we can actually unconditionally love. But if we place these limits and conditions on ourselves, you're going to get what you get. It's just the way it works. So, you know, I tell people, hey, I have the capacity to unconditionally love everyone because I unconditionally love myself. I don't beat myself up anymore. I let go of that um, element. It wasn't, it was just self-sabotage. It wasn't serving me. So, do I like everybody? <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> you know, uh, love and like are two different ideas. And by definition, they clearly are uh, different. You know, I don't support a lot of people's uh, ideologies and beliefs and practices and, um, all that stuff. I mean, I don't support it. I, I don't have to, but I allow it because what am I going to do? It's truly the uh, Zen Buddhist in me, I suppose, that you have to recognize that all things exist. One will not exist without the other. And it just, you know, it's really a matter of what you focus on. And so I don't focus on the hatred. I don't. And I've carried those banners. I have. You know, with all sorts of uh, ideology and agenda, forever. You know, just uh, insulting uh, my own intelligence by limiting myself to bannerism, labels, uh, conditions, beliefs, opposition, resistance. I did. All these things were um, so ingrained in me. The first march I ever attended. Um, was I was like 15 and it was in Seattle and then I was inspired to go to San Francisco 
uh, back in the 60s uh, when you know the uh, Vietnam War was raging um, these were deep deep concerns and there was a collective consciousness there was a, a whole counterculture that was exploding quite frankly and um, I was honored um, and grateful quite frankly it's the first time I actually felt like I was a part of something you know that had uh, some kind of meaning to me and so I willfully uh, participated and I, I went uh, to San Francisco several times and, uh, even up until um, the early 2000s uh, I was still going to San Francisco to participate you know with the invasions of Iraq and um, you know all these things and I carried those banners I did but I don't anymore I just laid the banners down I realize there's no um, there's no resolve in it the, you know to keep being in uh, opposition beating people over the head you know telling them they're wrong you know it just doesn't uh, doesn't serve uh, what did I eat for breakfast? I keep slipping with the wrong food. <laughs> yeah, drink your feet. Um, most, uh, I, I had a banana. Uh, that was it. I, I've had a lot of looping this morning, drank a lot of pee, and um, that's how I roll. I usually don't eat until the afternoon. I primarily eat one meal a day, somewhere usually two or three in the afternoon is when I actually um, eat. And I usually eat, uh, you know, like a, uh, I get these uh, organic mixed greens. Um, I like them. And I make a salad. Uh, and I put avocado and banana. Uh, the three fruits that are really my primary fruits are banana, avocado, and oranges. That's it. I find that, uh, you know, during season, if you can actually find real, <laughs> real fruit, <laughs> <laughs> you know that's a uh, that's always a marvel, but <clears throat> most of it is just so processed. Looks good, you know. You can you can go to the store and wow, those strawberries look tasty, or you know the blackberries or you know whatever. And yeah, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. And uh, so I just kind of stick with the basics for me. I have a very simple diet. Um, I'm very practical, very efficient, and, uh, you know, it's not super colorful. But I do eat cooked food. I mean, I make this, uh, you know, I usually make a, a, you know, a bit of a batch, you know, like some rice and beans. Uh, you know, I have this uh, batch that I made of couscous. I like couscous and quinoa. And uh, it has some um, chickpeas, garbanzos, and some Fava, fava beans, fava beans, <laughs> and diced tomatoes, and it's very tasty. And so, yeah, I, I'm not a, I'm not, you know, hung up, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I know that the pea is working, and uh, this is what I've really learned. I mean, I, I got really, um, you know, uh, kind of over focused and uh see Andaline, always nice to see you darling <laughs> big hugs to you uh i haven't had any meat in three years you know when i went vegan i uh quit meat altogether and i haven't had any meat in three years and uh yeah i i pretty much quit dairy and seafood and uh alcohol though i had a couple drinks during the holidays and um you know it's all good I, I don't have any um, I don't have any fixation on it um, at all you know I like pot um, I'll smoke it if it's available but again I'm not fixated on it it's not like I have you know Jones on it or any of that you know somebody offers me a hit sure I'll take it you know I like it it's all good to me but I've learned that my body is uh, it's 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 happening you know my temple is happening it's resurrecting it's changing and I have no other uh, source to um, attribute it to except Pete I mean it's totally changed me 
And I am grateful. I really am grateful. You know, I, I really did think I was going to be taking, uh, you know, pain medication and muscle relaxers and doing all that shit for the rest of my life. So when I realized that I had an alternative and could shift away from that, I truly was grateful because I was actually experiencing more side effects than real effects. And I was noticing that. I was paying attention to that. And, you know, there's nothing worse than, um, you know, having that nauseous feeling because of medications. It's, it's awful. It, it, it's just, you know, it, you can feel it. You can sense it. And it's like, I was like, what am I doing to myself? Well, ha! Now I know exactly what I'm doing to myself. Ha <laughs> ha, I got my own perfect medicine. I know exactly what it contains. I know exactly where it comes from. And I know exactly how to use it. And that's as simple as that. And I don't impose it on people. It's not my job. You know, I share it. You know, I'm open about it. Um, but, you know, people are going to do what they do regardless of what I do. And they're going to think what they think regardless of what I think. And so to spend any energy or focus on what other people think, especially about me, is a real waste of energy. I don't care. It makes no difference to me. The only thing I can actually control is my perception and my attitude. You know, how I view things, how I experience things, how I react to things. And my reactions have varied a lot in my lifetime. You know, I'd react in, you know, anger. And, you know, I can be a scary motherfucker. You know, I can. I could, you know, I'm, I'm a big guy. And I can get really intense. You know, I know how I could, uh, I can intimidate the hell out of somebody if I really wanted to. And I have. But I choose not. Now, somebody wants to play that game with me. <laughs> I give them fair warning. <laughs> I'm pretty good actor. It's not really what I'm feeling, but man, I can pull that shit right up and get it so up on somebody that they won't even see it coming. You know? But that's just not who I am. It's just not. I don't roll that way. I just don't. So, it doesn't enter into my uh, field uh, at all. Um, I've been a pacifist since I was 15. Uh, years old. I, I, I'll never forget the day, um, the last fight I had, and it was ugly. It was on a, uh, it was on a um, sidewalk uh, in my neighborhood, on a very busy street, Capitol Hill in Seattle, and it was in front of um, a store which had very big windows, and it was amazing. Um, you know. Neither of us uh, ended up crashing through one of these big plate glass windows. It was really ugly. And I'll never forget, I walk in, uh, you know, it's a couple blocks to my house. I remember walking away and I was like, never again. I refuse to do this. And I changed my mind. I just chose to be a pacifist. And I haven't had to uh, engage in that kind of energy at all ever since. Not that I haven't been confronted by it. You know, people have threatened me. I mean, I got a, uh, it's a great story. <laughs> it just reminded me. And this was uh, back in Union where I was um, living. And I lived there a couple of times. That's where I uh, launched out from Hood Canal when I left last September. Hey, Gene. Ha, funny. Yeah, it's funny you should appear. I was just talking about Union. <laughs> How perfect is that? So anyway, this was so. Uh, this was a long time ago, um, uh, early 2000s, and I was working in this uh, little cafe called the Union Bay Cafe, and um, you know it was real localized, and uh, you know I was working in the kitchen, and and I didn't have much to do. There's not much to do. Wasn't many places to go. So I'd hang around and uh, play pool. I was pretty good. Uh, so 
you know, I'd, I'd do that, and the bartender liked me, and he'd always give me free drinks. So there was a few characters there, you know, and, you know, there was a bit of crack uh, going on, some tweakers. And um, this ex-Marine, uh, Steve, Steve Smith, <laughs> you know, this one night we were there, and I don't know what he was pumped on. I don't know what, I don't even know what jacked him, but he came up to me. And he just looked at me with death in his eye. And he says, all right, man, that's it. We're going to settle this right now. We're going to go outside and we're going to settle this right now. And I just looked at him. I started laughing. <laughs> and I said to Steve, <laughs> brother, we're not going outside. That's first and foremost. That ain't going to happen. But more importantly, if you're the messenger that God sent to take me home, you better take me all the way fucking home, bro. Otherwise, go fuck yourself. That's all I said. And he just stared at me for a few moments. And he turned and walked away. <laughs> Cracked me up. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just saying, you know, uh, you don't have to fight. I mean, fighting's a choice. It's an energy field, you know. And there's a lot of people that like to be drawn into that energy field. I'm not one of them. I just don't go there. It's just not a part of my makeup. I just don't care for violence at all. I abhor it, really, quite frankly. So I don't entertain it at all. I just let, uh, hey, you know, I haven't got any, I just haven't got the time for hate. I just don't. It's just a waste of my energy and time. I just don't like it. So I don't do it. And, uh, hey, Jonas, Juanita, Brom, hey, all you guys, thanks for joining. Hey, Denise. <laughs> I just love this Saturday morning cartoon show. It's way fun. Um, you know, I just enjoy myself and. You know, I'm just sharing, um, you know, the goodness. You know, things are really good. Life is good. And, you know, I'm just grateful that I finally got the uh, entire book finished. That was really a press for me. And uh, having to rewrite and re-edit and do all that, man. Uh, wow. But what, a, what a, an amazing learning curve. You know, I learned so much. Um, not only about the editing process and... Um, you know, form and all that, but about myself, you know, it, it, to revisit the whole uh, series, uh, to really reflect on this whole last year and, uh, you know, really reconsider, you know, how many uh, changes that I've experienced, how much growth that I've actually um, had and still have, you know, there's no destination, it's all a journey. And it's a good one. It's a healthy one. And everybody's on the same uh, in their own life. It's all just a matter of what we think, what we choose, how we roll. But I tell you what, I'll never turn around and go back anywhere, ever. I rip those rear view mirrors off. I tell people honestly, I said, you know, I've learned a lot in my life. You know, I have a, I have a lot in my head. I, I have a memory that won't go away, and I have files that are deep. But I'll tell you what, I've never found anything more important or more profound that changed my life forever than urine therapy. Nothing. I can't compare it to anything. It's the most amazing thing that's ever occurred. And for this, I'm grateful. I just keep getting younger. My grays turn into brown. Everything's changing so rapidly. It, I mean, I'm watching it occur day by day. It just keeps happening. And there's no other reason for it except drinking my pee. And no, I don't take any supplements. I don't take vitamins. I don't do supplements. I don't do herbs. I don't do any of that. None. I just drink my pee. You know, wash with it, wash my hair, wash my face, you know, do my eyes. I do like sun gazing. And um, it's all working. I'm under photo 
synthesis. <laughs> With natural ingredients, all organic. <laughs> I just don't, uh, I don't care for inorganic material. That's why I don't ever uh, consider even for a moment to drink tap water, spring water, mineral water, all that. It, it has inner, inorganic uh, material and it leaches in our body. It's exactly what happens. People don't realize uh, what they are actually consuming. It leaches in our body. Now, I saw this really profoundly uh, when I fasted. Because when I went down to uh, 144, I mean, it was, I was pretty, uh, I was down to a frame, and my skin was just hanging all over me, just hanging on me. And, I mean, I even look at my neck, you know. I mean, if you look at my earlier videos, I could do this, and I'd have big, you know, it's like, it looked like jowls on a turkey. But you can see it's, I mean, it's just all tightening up. It, it, I mean, it's just amazing to me. And it's not like I'm doing any, you know, uh, real physical regimen or working out. It's, it's the pee that's doing it. My uh, skin has uh, become uh, elasticized. And it's just uh, reforming. You know, I love walking. I'll go out and walk four, eight, ten, twelve miles. You know, I love to play golf because it's a Zen thing to me. It's very relaxing. Having that golf course all to myself yesterday was just awesome. Just out there, you know, 32 degrees, you know, just, just well, 33, but there was a wind chill. But, you know, the greens were uh, supple, but uh, there was snow in the cups. <laughs> you know, the flags wouldn't stay in because there was, like, snow and ice in the cups. But, you know, it was all good. You know, it's all good. I just... Uh, my body, I mean, I look at myself, when I'm doing my um, AIDS urine um, washdowns, when I'm spraying myself with my, uh, with my pee bottle, and I'm standing there, there's a full length mirror here in the trailer, and I'm standing there spraying this and rubbing it in, and I look at my body, and I mean, I don't even have little love handles, I don't have nothing. I mean, it's gone. It's just gone. I'm just... Yeah, you know, 165 pounds. I look and feel like I did when I was 19 years old. It's just true. I'm, I can't make this shit up. You know, I don't. It's all happening, and it's happening every day, every moment, in the, every single breath I take. I feel it happening. Now, earlier this week, I got another little story for you. Now, I woke up with a uh, a headache. And I mean a real, I mean it was just a dull pain. And I'd already been a couple of days into um, my rewrite and editing. So I'd been holed up in the trailer and it was cold. It was down to three degrees. So I was keeping the stove going a lot uh, just to keep uh, the ice off the windows and keep the place reasonably um, you know, warm enough to just hang. And, but I was focused, and I kept looping all day. I just kept looping and looping, and um, headache wouldn't go away, just wouldn't go away. But I just, uh, you know, I was just being with it, and uh, continued what I was doing because I was determined to accomplish uh, this uh, rewrite and edit um, in a timely fashion to get it off to the publisher. So when I felt complete at that uh, at that point of the day and I had been uh, working I don't know almost probably eight eight or nine straight hours staring at my computer screen yeah I finally closed it down and I put on my headphones put on some old school and uh, went for a four mile walk the sun was out I was sun gazing uh, and walking and I realized after about 15 or 20 minutes the headache was gone just vanished. So I recognized what I was lacking is the true essentials. Some sun, some air, a uh, little exercise, a uh, change of uh, venue, so to speak. And so, again, I say this because it is a understanding, it's an understanding of the uh, potential and the power that we all have what exists within us, 
how we can actually transform our bodies, our minds, our heart, our spirit. We can transform anything we choose. It just depends on what we're uh, practicing, uh, what we're paying attention to, and uh, whether we accept the responsibility and the opportunity equally uh, to allow all that to happen. And I do. I accept. I trust. I allow. And, <laughs> I don't know, it's working. Yeah, I've never felt this good in my life. Never, never, ever have I felt this good in my life. Every day in every way. And so, I say cheers to that. It really is refreshing. This this is, you know, from an hour ago. You know, maybe a half an hour before I started. Flavorless. It actually just tastes like water. Actually, it tastes better than most water, <laughs> for sure. And uh, yeah, totally clean, totally sterile, totally pure. I know it's content. And because I do eat cooked food. Um, you know, and I like, uh, you know, I like to put things on, uh, you know, my, I like, I like, uh, I like to have food with my condiments. <laughs> so, sometimes, you know, I mean, you can taste it. I mean, that's the whole thing is that, uh, you know, you can always taste what you are um, consuming uh, one way or the other. P is a perfect barometer. It always gives you a clear indication of you know, what's so in your body. Even if it's totally disgusting, you might want to consider what you're doing. It won't harm you. No one's ever died from drinking their pee ever in recorded history. 5,000 years of recorded history. No one's ever died from drinking their pee. And it's sterile. It's pure. People who don't understand that they either just uh, don't want to do the research and understand what's so about it, or they just will, you know, hold on to their belief and their resistance and uh, whatever they were indoctrinated into. But I guarantee you, after you go pee, and you peed on your hands and washed your hands, your hands will be more clean and more sterile and more purified than that bullshit they leave on the counter that you squirt into your hand. It just is, you know, so we're being misled in that um, totally. Like, uh, oh, we're going to spread germs. No, we're not. That ain't going to happen. We're not spreading germs. We're protecting ourselves from germs. That's the real truth. Now, I watched a very interesting, uh, now I knew all this, but I like to watch. Um, There's certain people I really respect for their diligence and their research and their, um, and their fortitude about what they present. And uh, one, people, uh, one person I subscribe to um, is um, uh, the Corbett, not Corbett, Corbett Report. And he lives, he's a Canadian, he lives in um, Japan, and he produces um, pretty regularly. He's been on air for a really long time, and he's, he's got a lot of insight. He's, he's a real researcher, and he put together, and it was an old show. This was years ago, and I just happened to come up my feed, and I just decided to watch on it. And it was all about how the, um, the, how the uh, Rockefellers um, you know, as a key player, but in also involved with J.P. Morgan and um, Andrew Carnegie and, you know, other um, industrialists, you know, the money people, how they completely hijacked medicine with intent. They completely hijacked, completely. And if you look around, you can see it was successful. They promoted uh, allopathic as the only uh, true science. They made out all naturopathic medicine as being quackery. And since they 
you know, basically had all the money, they had all the influence. All of the medical schools, they were on, and they still are. Rockefeller people are, are uh, or their minions, are on every single board of every institution. Medical, medical schools, academics, um, insurance, finance, government, media. All you have to do is some simple homework. It's not hard to figure out you know, why things are so fucked up and how they got that way. <clears throat> and what are you going to do about it? Bitch, complain, argue, fight, debate, beat people over the head, scream in the streets, you know, throw bricks through windows. What does that really accomplish? Nothing. It actually just builds more resistance. That's what it does. So how can we change? What can we do? What can I do? I can protect myself, and I know it. I do. I have. I am. And P has been the way to find that freedom. Totally. You know, I used to, I, I spent 20 years, 20 years, you know, focusing and complaining and uh, beating people over the head about chemtrails, about harp, about elf, you know. And now the real current uh, player is the advancement of the 5G, the electromagnetic frequency microwaves, which are everywhere. It's a global event. It's not just, uh, you know, uh, localized. It's everywhere. And this shit's dead serious. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is a ultimate um, play uh, for mind control, whether you realize it or not. It's not just about having a faster internet or downloading your Netflix. It's not about that. Not at all. It's mind control. It's total mind control. And the more calcified you are, the more fluoride uh, you consume, you know, along with all these other um, inorganic uh, materials, you know, aluminum, barium, mercury, uh, the list is long. Um, we are being poisoned, <laughs> really, quite frankly, we are being poisoned. But I no longer concern myself with any of that. Why? P. That's it. I have my P coat on. I vibrated to higher frequency. And I say that in uh, jest because it's clever. But it's beyond clever. It's authentic. It's real. It actually is working. I don't need to wear a tinfoil hat. It's not required. Bring it on. I don't fucking care. Bring it on. Now, I'm just not even going to pay attention to that shit. I just don't. I don't focus on it. You know, if you look at uh, the, the uh, system that was <clears throat> put in place to protect you, you know, like Carol said, the FDA, the AMA, you know, the CDC, you know, all of these um, agencies, Department of Agriculture, Department of the Interior, I mean, it doesn't matter. They are serving corporate interest. It's what they are. It's what they do. The NGOs is the same thing. It doesn't matter. American Cancer Society, American Heart Association, the kidney, you know, doesn't matter. Look who their corporate sponsors are. See how much money is influencing their policy, their decision making, and how they rule. I mean, the American Heart uh, Association, who are some of their biggest corporate sponsors? Tyson. <laughs> the American Beef Association, uh, you know, the list is long, folks. All you have to do is look into it. You don't have to, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You just have to do some homework. It's not hard, you know. the The information's out there. 
and the, you know everybody's like the you know fake news and the ray you know this that and the other hey if you're intelligent you can figure it out you can sort it out the information is all over the place all you have to do is look for it you know and understand it yeah um, like Andrew is just saying like China you know uh, they're gonna they're, they're actively um, in China attempting to um, dislodge discredit and uh, defy uh, the pea drinkers uh, it, this is public knowledge I actually posted a couple of things on my pages just recently um, in uh, articles regarding that but again, you know, if we if we think that bitching, now I, I believe in collective uh, reasoning. I do collective consciousness, but to go out and uh, you know be brawling doesn't get the job done. It just doesn't. It takes more than that. You know, certainly people think, well, you know, my vote counts. Your vote doesn't fucking count. <laughs> it doesn't. That's a joke. Really. The only thing that's really going to change anything is consciousness. That's it. There needs to be a paradigm shift in consciousness. That, that alone will shift the frequency shift the energy, shift it all. Because as long as there's all this debate and fighting and arguing and resistance, all you're going to get is more arguing, fighting, debate, and resistance. It's just the, it's just the dynamic. It's just how it works. So I just choose to hold a higher space, to trust and allow. You can't give what you haven't got. If you haven't got self-love, if you haven't got self-respect, how are you supposed you're going to give any anybody else love and respect? You can't give what you haven't got. It's an inside job, man. It all starts with us. You know, we got to clean up our yard. We got to clear out our closets. We got to upgrade our shit and dump the garbage. Realign ourselves with our true selves, our beingness. If you realize that, you know, again, most people are damaged goods. They've been wounded since childhood. I know, I'm one of them. And I, I, I still work at it. It's a process. It's always a process. There's so many layers to it. But when you allow the process, much is revealed. It's just trusting yourself enough and loving yourself enough to allow these processes to occur. You can't resist them. You can't deny them. It won't get the job done. It just won't. I mean, not, not my experience. You know, maybe somebody else has some magic pill or some formula. I don't know. Hey, we live in a matrix. We do. Anything that ever was, ever will be, already is. Just all is about what you pay attention to. What you bring into your consciousness. There aren't any original thoughts. We're just recycling. That's it. It's just drawing from the universal mind. It's just sourcing what's already there. It's what it is. It's how it really works. So love yourself. Respect yourself. Honor yourself. Celebrate your life. You deserve it. Everyone does. Everyone. We are who we've been waiting for. All of us. We're the ones we've been waiting for. And the more we realize it within ourselves, the more we'll recognize it in others. 
we are not alone. We are one. We're all from the same makeup. This could be why Shivambu was kept secret and the yogis had to retreat to private spaces in the mountains. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, it's a good point, Andrew. I choose not to hide. That would be a luxury, certainly. Um, I mean, God knows I live on 80 acres of private property in the woods. I could live like a hermit, effortlessly. And I have for a long time. I just choose not to anymore. I just feel that it's just time. It's time to be in an awakened state. And I just embrace and welcome that shift. I trust. I allow. I do. And there are amazing, beautiful, remarkable, intelligent beings out there everywhere. As you recognize it in yourself, you'll see it everywhere. It's magnetic. So, if you want love, be love. Love yourself. Love will find its way. If you like drama, and a lot of people do, you know, people like their aches and pains and their suffering because it brings a certain, you know, sympathy card. And that's fine. You know, whatever serves. That's what it is. But... <clears throat> Me? I don't know. I just don't see any other, uh, I just don't see any other tarmac to fly and love. To me, that's the, uh, that's the high octane shit right there. Love. Love yourself. Be love, see love. Receive love, give love. It just goes around, comes around. It's abundant, really. And the more you allow it, the more you'll receive it. it just looks like that. I know. I, I can't give away love fast enough. It just pours in so heavily, quickly, always, generously, lovingly. So I just give it away, give it away, give it away now. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. So, uh, you know, I don't want to get too serious on you. You know, I have my moments. I'm just always in the moment. I don't script any of this. I just, um, I allow whatever comes through to be what's so. You know, that's life. That's the way it goes. You know, when I want to script something, I write a poem. A short story or a commentary. You know, then I, uh, there's a script. But when I do these... It's all live. That's why it's live. What you see is what you get. I don't have any other mask. You know, I'm not going to pretend. This is who I am. Raw. <laughs> raw, raw, raw. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> Cheers, mate. I love all my European friends. They're so cool. There's so many of them, too. They just are so full of uh, spirit and love, you know, all over the place, man. The Netherlands, Ireland, Scotland, Italy, Spain. I mean, it's just uh, it's amazing to me how much love is out there. It really is. It's just, it's just so beautiful. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I uh, I see so many comments. You know, there's you know people. I I appreciate the comments, and I do the best I can to pay attention to those and uh, still stay in the moment. Uh, so thank you. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for your love. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for sharing. You know, 
it's 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 just remarkable to me how much uh, beauty there is, how much love there is, you know, big time. So I don't know if I have any more to say. Uh, if anybody has any direct questions or anything, I certainly am happy to uh, address them. Uh, otherwise, um, I'm going to move on with my day. I got to go fill some propane and gas tanks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want that shit to run out again, boy. It, man, when the when the gas goes off, this place turns into a deep freeze. Ice forms on the glass, quarter inch thick. I mean, it's really it's amazing how cold it gets, how quickly. So, I hope you all have a beautiful, wonderful, marvelous day. Remember to love yourself. Give yourself a big hug. Everybody deserves a big hug. If you can't give it, you know, get it from others, give it to yourself. You know, warm your heart. Yeah, just warm your own heart. Let yourself in. The more you let yourself in, the more you allow others to come in. It's true. So I love you all dearly. I really do. I really appreciate you. I appreciate your time and your considerations and your concerns and, you know, your love. So, um, again, uh, anybody who wants to be a part of the Oran Oracle's book, it is now in the publisher. Um, the only thing left to uh, send to them is any comments. Um, <clears throat> so I welcome those. Again, you can uh, uh, make them if you like. If you have any uh, comments about my poetry or about me that you'd like to submit, I appreciate it. And you can just send those to my email at weedushivambu at gmail.com. And I use the pen name Casey Caban. Uh, so that's how the best way to address it. Uh, if you'd like to be a donator, I certainly welcome and appreciate uh, donations. Uh, I still have uh, a couple of uh, significant payments left to make to the publisher, and that can be done at uh, PayPal. Uh, dot me forward slash we do. Uh, $25 will guarantee you a signed and numbered copy of the book. With love. So, uh, yeah. Ha! Yeah. Don't worry, that's coming, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, have a beautiful, wonderful, marvelous day. Thanks for uh, joining me. Um, I recognize and appreciate everybody's time. I do. And, uh, you know, uh, Oh, boom! Hey! Ha, you just been loved. Ha, bye now. Keep the peace together. Ha, ha.